So my name is Roy Burston. I come from Bogota, Colombia, and I'm one of the co-founders of Me Too. Very excited to be here today to share a little bit about what we're working on. Hi, my name is Beatriz Acevedo. I'm the other co-founder out of the three founding partners. I come from Mexico. So well represented here. So uh, we were uh, told very clearly that we only have 15 minutes. We'll jump right into it because us as Latinos, we tend to um, Get run too long, be a little too expressive. So what is Me Too? We are a technology-driven media company. Over the last two and a half plus years, we've developed the largest community of Latino content creators and social media influencers on the web. And our everyday is really to act as uh, connectors between the four elements of the media equation, that is audiences, with creators, with brands, and with traditional content buyers, as well as all the new digital platforms and OTT players that are dotting the digital landscape. Um, and we think that if we can do that really well every day, we will become the media platform of choice for today's Latino audiences. To give you guys a frame of reference, uh, we've uh, really worked a lifetime over the last two and a half years and have managed to um, build a fairly substantial audience reach. Uh, in the US today, we're reaching about one third of the US Hispanic audience on YouTube. Uh, to give you a frame of reference with all the platforms, that's about slightly over a third of the US Hispanic reach of Facebook. And we're more or less at par with the reach in this demographic that Twitter has. Uh, when we look beyond the US uh, in, into the uh, Latin American region, uh, our reach goes even further. In Mexico, for example, uh, we're reaching on a monthly basis about seven out of every 10 web users. Uh, and when we look at Latin America in general, the number is a little bit uh, um, over a third of all web users that we're reaching with our content on a monthly basis. Uh, and behind this reach, what we have is a growing, very loyal, very engaged audience that loves the content that we produce. So, how do we do this? How come we've managed to grow so fast in such a relatively brief period of time? Um, it is because we believe we're building Me Too at the confluence of four very important, sort of very significant trends that are reshaping the Latino media landscape across the board. On the one hand, we have what we call the digital video boom, which I'm sure uh, a lot of the folks in the audience are familiar with over the last few years. There's been a massive explosion in the consumption of digital video, and it's really substantially changing the media habits of generations. Uh, and behind it, there is a lot of innovation going on with new content formats, new types of stars, new ways of engaging audiences. Uh, and it's, it's very, very exciting to be part of that. Uh, and the most exciting and interesting part is that uh, we believe that this trend is just really in its early stages. Uh, we look forward uh, this year to really uh, see how uh, platforms like Facebook, Twitter, and Snapchat that are really getting aggressively behind the native content initiatives play out, and we're very excited to be uh, a part of those trends. And on the other hand of the spectrum, what we have is what could arguably be called the most strategic demographic in, in the United States today, which is the Latino uh, population. Not only because we are, uh, there's a lot of us, <laughs> Uh, at 56 million people and growing fast, um, if U.S. Hispanics were a country, would be the second largest uh, country by population in Spanish-speaking Latin America. So very critical demographic uh, and really distinguished by one characteristic, which is we're super consumers. We're really sort of acquisitive people, and that tends to be a very seductive characteristic for brands. Um, and in this landscape, Traditional media companies have been rather slow in adjust adjusting to these trends, and so that's left a lot of white space across the content landscape where Me Too is really working hard and innovating every day. Okay, so just to give you guys a little bit of context on what Roy was saying as far as like we are the fastest growing demographic. We are absolutely driving population growth in the demo 18 to 34 Today till 2020, 100% of the population growth will come from Latinos. So that is a very big number for sure. Uh, one out of every four births in the United States is of a Hispanic, and in California and in New York, it's one out of every two. So for any business that you are in, you absolutely need to be in business with Hispanics if you want to grow your business. 
we are young. Uh, we are a very, very young demographic when you compare ourselves to the medium age of everyone else who is not Hispanic. Our average is 25 years old versus 39. So 14 years younger is a very big deal. We speak English. Um, you know, definitely Spanish is the language, could be a shock to many of you here, that's spoken most around the world. However, uh, the good news is for any of you who did not take Spanish in college is you do not need to speak Spanish uh, to converse with us. 90% of US Hispanics do speak English. And that's a very big myth that people have. Oh, uh, you know what, I don't speak Spanish. I don't know how I could be in business with this demographic, but you can. Uh, we love to shop, so we are very good consumers for ThreadUp for sure. Um, 1.4 trillion is the buying power for Hispanics a year. So again, the myth that this is a demo that is poor is absolutely not true. We have lots of kids. What does that mean? How many kids do we have versus non-Latinos? Just to give you a sense, population uh, between births and deaths for non-Hispanics, if you are a Mr. Smith who dies, there is one cute baby Smith that is born. With Latinos, um, there is one Senor Perez who dies, and there are 10 baby Perez that are born. So one to one ratio for non-Hispanics, one to 10 ratio for Hispanics. It is a very scary thing, but we have a lot of kids. And we pretty much over-index on everything. We have this running joke amongst ourselves where we say Hispanics over-index in over-indexing. Um, and you will see a little more of that in our presentation. Of course, we are ahead of the digital curve. We are very early adopters. We spend more time consuming digital video than any other demographic, around an hour and a half more time than anyone else. Um, which you might be asking, how do you have so many kids, yet you are on your electronics all the time? But uh, I don't know, a topic for discussion maybe at the after party. Okay. So with all these stats, you know, it was shocking to us, as I'm sure it is to you guys, why there are no more companies or no other companies like Me Too in the market. And we still don't really know. I think maybe traditional media companies, like Roy was saying, have been a little slower to adapt because they still make a lot of money out of the traditional content that they have. And they have the older demo that still um, works well for them. Uh, but in the digital space, people have not paid a lot of attention. Um, so it's a demographic that is incredibly underserved. So for many years, uh, young Latinos and young millennials have been waiting to get the content that they want, and we haven't gotten it, culturally relevant content, both in English and Spanish and Portuguese. And we only get the traditional content that people think we like. So the game shows, the telenovelas, and the soccer. I mean, I guess the soccer, we should keep well, that one, because yes. Roy and I really like our football. So soccer is not a stereotype. We do like our soccer. But obviously, young millennials want and consume much more than that. And they've been waiting to find a community and a platform that can really, they can really call home, where they can collaborate with other like-minded people like themselves, and who they can really partner to continue to be entrepreneurial and take whatever that they do to the next level. And this is me too, and we're incredibly proud of what we are building with our community. So um, how do we actually do this? Uh, what does me too look like from the inside out? Um, at the core of everything we do is the technology and data analytics platform that we've been busily building and iterating and, and expanding uh, continuously, both through our internal proprietary efforts and through partnerships with third parties. Um, we basically ask this platform to do three things for, for us. Number one is we ask it to uh, make us more intelligent. Uh, so as you guys can imagine, with the volume of, of audiences that we have on a daily basis, we collect vast amounts of information, and we're building a lot of data tools and techniques that allow us to really tune into what the preferences of our audiences are and what the nuances are when you look at, the, at these audiences across demos or geographies or categories or platforms. Uh, and we're really very intensely focused on trying to zero in on the components that determine content performance uh, in the digital landscape. Um, so we really want to be the most intelligent people in the room when it comes to understanding uh, Latino audiences. And, and we're happy to say that we're well on our way there. Um, 
Number two, once we have some intelligence, it really guides all our content creation efforts, both on our own behalf and the guidance that we provide a content creation creator, a community of content creators. Um, and so the second thing we're trying to achieve with our platform is to uh, help us and allow us to be more nimble. It used to be that creating video was a pretty time and labor intensive process, uh, and that's no longer the case. You can take an idea from concept to distribution literally within minutes. And so we're continuously trying to figure out ways in which we can squeeze efficiency out of the content creation process, while at the same time fostering collaboration between creators across geographies. Um, and it really allows us to be nimble when it comes to testing new ideas. We do a ton of testing of concepts. And then once we hit with something that the audiences like, we really get aggressively behind it. And that takes us to the third thing we ask our platform to do for us, which is make us more effective. As we start publishing content across a growing number of platforms, the complexity in terms of uh, formats and um, native players, et cetera, and, uh, and best practices really grows exponentially. So we're managing this a lot through tools so that once we publish the content, it is as visible as it can be, um, and it allows us to distribute simultaneously across the landscape. And that basically describes our sort of wash, rinse, and repeat process. Once we publish the content, we generate data, and we start over. Um, and so this platform is really the engine that drives uh, four distinct components in our business uh, in which we're organized. Uh, there's the creator network. We're really focused on working with this community to get them to the next level. Um, there's our content platform. We're really focused on our o and our own and operated platform from which we publish this content. Um, what we call Meet to Studio, which is where we concentrate our internal content development efforts, uh, both for digital platforms and traditional media. And the work we do with, uh, with uh, brands uh, that want to target our audience, uh, we call it Brand Solutions. Um, to give you a, a little bit more uh, granularity into each one of these, in terms of the creator network, uh, again, we're very focused on sharing intelligence and guiding our creators in terms of understanding their audience better. Um, a vast majority of our creators are really self-taught, so we invest a lot of resources and we're developing tools constantly uh, to help them in improve their production skills and their content creation skills, therefore take themselves to the next level. Uh, we also operate an internal community where our creators can interact directly with each other, collaborate, uh, and it also works uh, very effectively as a promotional platform within this community. Um, and last but not least, we were also very focused on trying to make it easier, reduce the friction um, that brands and content buyers have in reaching creators so that we can re generate revenue opportunities for them. Uh, in terms of our content platform, while well, MeToo really had the, its roots in, uh, on the YouTube uh, uh, platform, we, we consider ourselves platform uh, agnostic. We really want to be pushing our content into as many uh, places that it makes sense where our audience is, and our focus in this effort is really creating the Me Too brand. Uh, we really want to um, develop a editorial voice that is robust, that is consistent, that uh, speaks to our audience in a culturally relevant way. We want Me Too to be the media brand of choice of this generation of Latinos. So on the studio side, as Roy had just mentioned, we are definitely digital first. We love to uh, be incubating and testing formats and talents and ideas digitally in a very quick and nimble way and inexpensive, by the way, way as well. And then being able to have a proof of concept to then take um, transmedia. So we've gotten a lot of demand uh, this past year from every Silgo network studio. Uh, for our content and for our talent. Um, talent, bilingual talent, is incredibly valuable. Uh, we sold a couple of um, series to Discovery Channel, to their Spanish counterpart, Discovery Familia, last year. Uh, one's Gurus de Belleza, the other one's Casa Linda. We have also a pilot over at HLN, uh, talent development deal at ABC, and a couple of branded blocks with two other networks for lifestyle and comedy. So this should be a very, very busy year for our studio. Just to give you guys a quick snapshot of what we mean when taking it from digital um, to primetime TV. As you can see, here's one of our creators, Chris Ordaz, who um, came into the Me Too incubator a year ago. She's a mom of three, really wanted to make a living uh, making videos, but she couldn't. Uh, we started bringing her advertising opportunities, created an original digital series for her once we had the audience data and a proof of concept took it to a network, had three networks bidding for the show, premiered on primetime, 
quart last qu quarter of 2014, and it increased Discovery Familia's ratings at the nine o'clock primetime slot by 275%. So there she is in her billboard, along with another two Mituera girls um, who were all blogging in their bathrooms just a few months back on Times Square. So we're very proud um, that we were able to accomplish that. And Casalinda beat all the ratings for Q4 as well last year um, in, in our women, female, 18 to 34 demographics. So that was very exciting for us and for them. And brand solutions, this is another very hot place uh, where brands really have come to us as the experts and as Roy was saying, as the smartest people in the room that we always want to be, uh, really knowing our demographic, really knowing our audience better than anybody else, to really create authentic and culturally relevant native um, branded content. Uh, it's very, very, very difficult to find culturally relevant content for Latinos in this country. Uh, a lot of them who are young consume content in English, so that's definitely not been a choice for them. Um, so whether it's English, Spanish, or Portuguese, we are absolutely the go-to place for blue chip brands to find a solution for their talent. And just to give you guys a sense of what Me Too looks and feels like, here's a 30 second very quick demo. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Thank you.